On the Gulf, we fish. We fish big. And whether in Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, or Texas, we reel it in every day to bring America and the world the freshest catch on the coast. But what does it take to navigate these waters? For fishermen like David Walker, he'll tell you it takes a lot of love and a hankering for challenge. You see a lot of things out in the water and a lot of experiences you'll never forget. All type of fish, all type of weather, and uh, just a lot of good times, you know. For those who grew up in a fishing family, it's a life unlike any other. Well, I, I grew up on the Gulf Coast down here, uh, inland of ways in inland Alabama. And I uh, spent a lot of time down here on the Gulf fishing. My dad would take me out on head boats fishing out of Panama City and Destin and up and down the Gulf Coast. And we fished over on Orange Beach. And just a lot of fishing. Spent a lot of time on the beach until I was able to go fishing. My youngest son, he started fishing last year and uh, he loves fishing and uh, He's just having a ball. He enjoys it, and, I, and I'd like to see it continue on, and maybe someday even his children might be interested in going on. When the day starts, so does the adventure. The biggest thing is you come down, you're focused on making the trip. You know, you, you got to plan your trips around when the weather's going to be good. You know, the, uh, the markets are good. You know, you get that little, I guess, butterfly feeling in your stomach. You know, you're going to be gone from home for a few days. And you want to be with your family, but you know, you, you know, you want to take care of your family too. And, you want to get out there on the water and do your job. You don't have a good time to make a living too. You take care of your crew. You, you always worry about making sure everybody has a good, safe trip and uh, everyone has a good paycheck when they get home. All right, that was a good trip last trip. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope we get eight, uh, nine real quick. Just depends on the market, maybe more. You got to think when you got them. You don't get them. You know, we have an allocation on our fish. And you don't want to go out and catch all your allocation up in one trip. You'd like to spread it out for the year, keep the market stable, keep the price stable. Uh, ideally, you would like to catch uh, eight, 9,000 pounds of fish in a trip. You contact your crew, you get a date set, a time set, you meet there at the boat, and when there's not many people around, we get the boat iced up and uh, do all the grocery shopping. It takes quite a bit of groceries to go four or five days at a time like that. And then the next morning, you'll just get up early and uh, top off of your fuel and bait get ready to fish. On the way out, you know, they're, they're cutting bait, they're getting their gears ready, uh, repairing any gears, or building new gears, uh, just getting their tackle in line, and, uh, getting ready for the intense battle. It's heart and soul in the game, heading out to what could be rough waters. Yeah. What are we doing on bait? We still got plenty of bait? I have to catch them. Okay. All right. All right. Too soft. Well, I'm looking forward to this next trip. You know, the weather's finally broke. It's been rough all winter. We're really excited about getting out there and uh, get those hooks in the water and over the rail, across the scale, back home. We want to have a good trip. You are under the gun sometimes. Sometimes the fish don't bite. The pressure changes. You have to deal with the weather and currents. And some fish move. You know, they have tails. They swim around. Got to stay on top of them. You got to keep them located. One trip they may be in deeper water. One trip they may be in shallower water. It could be west, to east. You know, everything changes. You know, that's why they call it fishing instead of catching. Sometimes we fish 24 hours straight. Um, You'll make it. I'm worn out, but you'll make it. You're looking, little, you're looking a little sunburn. I need some relief. But fisherman David Walker makes no compromises. It's just a hard job. It's, it's a lot, a lot of hours, you know, that's known bad times that so we've fished at least two days straight in a row without ever taking a nap. When they did bite, you took the opportunity and you stayed with them until you finished your trip. And sometimes that required long, you know, two days, 48 hours straight, where we would lay down for three or four hours and get back and go right back at it again. It's the adrenaline that keeps you going. That's yeah. the way you can stay up for 20 hours plus. Yeah. Making the catch means sustaining his family and supporting his community. Not to mention tempting seafood lovers all over America. Because if it wasn't for commercial fishermen like David Walker, you wouldn't be able to enjoy wild gulf fish at your local restaurant or retailer. There's nothing like the fish that you get on the gulf. I mean, it's so fresh, so good, and fried. I mean, there's so many different ways to cook it. And it's so good for you. I mean, it's hard to find anything like that nowadays in the market that you can get. It's naturally good for you like that. And all these restaurants up and down the Gulf Coast, you know, they're just seafood lovers. You know, it's just part of the heritage down here. It's America's favorite seafood. It's important to the local communities. Uh, you know, you look at the seafood supply chain, it comes from the boat, to the processor, to the fish house, to the seafood markets, grocery stores, you know, and to the dinner plate. People enjoy knowing where their seafood came from. 
you know, are they paying for Red Snapper? They want to have Red Snapper. And the traceability offers the consumer a safe meal and knows that it's been taken care of all the way from the hook to the plate. From the water to the processing plants, to the restaurants and to the retailers, David brings it home and to the table. I like snapper. I like the smaller snapper. There's red snapper and there's also vermilion snapper. I like a grouper. And there's several different species of grouper that you can enjoy. Dolphin, mai mai. The Gulf supplies a lot of seafood. I think it's somewhere around 20%. The Gulf's bounty is his pride and joy. I love it. I mean, fishing is fun. I mean, it's, there's times when it's rough. It's not quite so fun, but I mean, you can even have some good times in. I mean, it's just fun. It's excitement. You never know what you're going to catch. Most people who love it are hooked on it for life. And it's the pride and joy of the entire golf industry that makes being a fisherman not just a job, but a way of life.